Teams usually go to the rink on the morning of a game day, but we're here in a hotel conference room. The beach is just behind us. What do you make of how the Leafs are approaching game three in Florida? Well, certainly a relaxed kind of environment, I, I felt, uh, in the lead up to this game. You know, given how important it is, you have Alex Kerfoot talking about it being a must win for the team. Kind of just felt like any day in February, and, and I guess it's, this is a difficult place to be too worked up. It's 30 degrees outside, the Leafs altering the routine, as you mentioned, and, and a big part of that is just logistics. It can be 45 minutes, even an hour to the rink from here, depending on the traffic, and I think the Leafs didn't want to do that twice. And so, you know, they, they, they keep the guys away, uh, obviously have their meetings and, and get ready for the game that way and conserve their energy with two off days since the last game. So I, I do think that this is a, it's, it's a little bit of a change, but I think it could be positive because it's been such a long year and there's so much stakes riding on this game. Yeah, I and mean, you look at the body language, if you believe in reading into that from Tavares, from Kerfoot, from um, uh, TJ Brody, they look pretty relaxed. And I think this is a benefit to this team that let's face it, this is the season in many ways for them if they lose this game. They're away from the fray in Toronto. They're away from the white noise. And I know the players always tell us they don't read what's out there, come on. They know that the Toronto market right now is on edge with them losing the first two games. And listen, they were 3-0 and in Tampa last round. And it's just a more relaxed atmosphere down here in Florida for the players to focus on the task at hand. Well, Pierre, you mentioned body language. At yesterday's practice, Ilya Samsonov didn't have the greatest body language. He seemed pretty stressed. But Chris, what gives the Leafs confidence that their number one goalie can respond tonight? Well, the fact he's done it all year, right? He's not been a goalie that's strung together consecutive losses too often. It's not something the Leafs as a team have done too much. You have to go back to October to find when they last lost three straight games, and, and that's what's potentially on the line if they're not able to win this one in game three against the Panthers. And so I think that that history helps them build it. That They really feel, too, Sheldon Keith mentioning, that his experience in that, that round against Tampa is invaluable because he really hadn't had much playoff track record prior to arriving in Toronto. That was a big series for him to go head to head with Vasilevsky, come out on top. And I don't mind that he's fiery. I'll be honest. I, I think that he's been very honest about his performance. He's talked about looking in the mirror and upping you know, his own game. And I just think he holds himself to a high standard. So I don't, I don't mind a little bit of emotion there from the goaltender at practice. And of course, the other part of the equation is the Leafs having to solve Sergei Bobrovsky more often than they have. John Tavares talked today about you know, more screens and tip-ins and traffic, which is what you want to do against every goalie, but they haven't done enough in this series against Bobrovsky. The recipe for Andre Vasilevsky, that's what they have to bring here to Sergei Bobrovsky. But as Sheldon Key pointed out, different series so far. They've had more chances off the rush, which they didn't get against Tampa. They've had a lot of clean looks, but they need traffic. They need rebounds. Paul Maurice made the point that Bobrovsky is their freshest player. It was Alex Lyon carrying the load down the stretch for them. Samsonov will be making his 49th start of the season tonight. That's already a career high, his previous high, 43 last season.